my Mangela Pothos has reached the very top of its pole and it's kind of leaning forward a bit. So I think it's time to get on top of this moss pole. Hey everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My Mangela Pothos is probably one of the most popular plants on the internet. I get asked about it all the time. Probably also because it's always in frame, but it is definitely a stunner. And it's one of these plants that is, at least over here in Australia, readily available and you see it growing a lot, but you don't often see it growing up a moss pole so that it can grow these beautiful large leaves. Now, I don't remember exactly when I started this plant on a moss pole, but I'll pop a photo up on screen with uh, early stages of this plant. It has definitely been over two years, I think. Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe it's, maybe it's, I reckon, around two years. What that also means is that at the bottom over here, and sorry, I'm struggling to fit the whole thing in screen, but at the bottom over here, you can see it started losing a lot of its leaves. That's normal, those leaves would be older than two years old by now, and leaves have a limited time span. So that is perfectly fine, but it's starting to look a little ugly. Plus, at the very top of the moss pole, the plant has actually started growing off the moss pole because, well, it reached the top. There's no more moss pole to attach to, meaning that these aerial roots that are coming out of the top nodes right now have nothing to attach to, meaning Wasted potential in my opinion. Plus, as I showed you earlier, it's leaning forward quite a bit, which I'm a bit surprised by. None of my other plants seem to be doing that. So I think even if it wasn't reaching the top, it would be a good time for at least a repot. But today I wanna show you my chop in extent. But I wanna do the chop in extent slightly different to how I normally do it. But let's just get right into it and I'll explain the process throughout. Now what I already have done beforehand, and let me bring this a bit closer to you so you can see it. What I've done leading up to this day is I have cut a hole in the stem over here. That was just the other day, maybe two days ago. That way the cut can already dry out and when I pot up this bit into a pot, there is less chances of it rotting. Now. While I'm close here, let me just show you how beautiful of a root system this plant has grown in and around the moss pile. And there are some really, really chunky ones. Let me see if I can show you that. Can you see this? There's some really chunky ones coming out here. So happy days. So for this chop and extend method to work, it is really, really important that the plant has thoroughly rooted into the moss pole, which it has. This plant started as a small cutting on this pole and it climbed up this 180 centimeters over, let's say the course of two years. And as the plant climbed, every single node rooted into the moss pole, which is essential for all of this to work. Now, I have a little garden stake over here at the back and that was kind of just connecting the top and the bottom part of the pole because these are two 90 centimeter poles just stacked on top of each other. The joint is exactly over here and that's exactly where I cut the stem as well because that's where I'm gonna cut the pole now. Now the two poles are just connected via a few more cable ties. So I'm just gonna chop through those and then I should be in a position to just very easily lift off. Oh, one more here. Could just get up, but that would be too easy, right? Ah, there we go. Now, sometimes what happens, and let me twist it around again, sometimes a root comes from the top and goes into the bottom. All of these actually. So over here, what I try to do is I try and free them as much as I can. So I just pull on them. Like look at this one, for example. Whee! Happy days. That's a good root to save. And let's pull on this one. Okay, this one doesn't want to come out, so I just have to cut this one, which is okay. Now, if I try and lift this off, I'm sure there's more roots in there. Ah, oh, there we go. That was good. See? So, let me park this on the side for a sec. And let me 
get rid of this steak because the steak is a little too skinny. I'm gonna replace it with a thicker one. Here we are. So I've got two poles, that's the bottom and that's the top. So what I wanna do over here is normally what I do is I just take the top, I put it back up and I re-extend it. Today, and I've done this a couple of times with some other plants before, so this is not my first rodeo. What I actually wanna do is I wanna take the bottom and the top, I wanna plant them together and then extend one of them. So let me empty this out. And I'll just reuse this sort of aeroid mix usually in the garden. But got some decent roots over here, not bad, but majority of the root system is really within the moss pole. So I'm not expecting a huge root system in here. I'll park this on the side. Right, so we are put two moss poles next to each other. I'll go slightly larger. Usually I put my moss poles in 20 centimeter pots because 20 centimeters is the largest pot size that comes in see-through. But with two poles next to each other, twice as much space, twice as many roots and so on. Let's go 25, sometimes I go 30. Depends on how many plants are on each pole as well. This one is just one vine. So there's basically just two plants in here now. So I'm gonna plant these two next to each other. So one goes here and the other one goes here. Now let me be strategic in which one goes which way. Up. All right, so straight up, sometimes where you do this, obviously the pot is now also a bit deeper, meaning that some of these leaves down here will not make it. So unfortunately, I have to cut at least this one, these two. Sorry, hmm. well, it is what it is. So I pop this in here. Actually, it might just look nice as just one, huh? Ah, whatever. Actually, I'm gonna plant this one to the left, so you're right, because this plant over here is kind of leaning towards the left side of the pole, if that makes sense. And this one is leaning to the right side of the pole. So if I now plant them next to each other, they're kind of point in the right, like they're closer. I don't know if that makes sense. Beautiful. So got them close to each other like this. Now, just for the, just to make my life a bit easier, I will connect these two using some cable ties, right, just to make it a bit easier to maneuver. Beautiful. And I will also connect them down here a little bit. Beautiful. All right, so now they're just kind of one unit. Now this part of the pole, I want to make sure it's filled with aeroid mix. So I'm going to try and take as much moss out of this as possible. But at the same time, there's a lot of roots in here. I don't want to destroy the roots. So finding a medium between taking some moss out and not destroying the roots in the process. Yeah, do you want to sit in the dirt, baby? I think that's good enough. Didn't get to take all too much out. I'm replacing this with a little bit of aeroid mix at the bottom of the pole instead. And whoop. I will also plant this towards the back of the pot and I will also plant this with a slight tilt because we saw it before, it likes to be top heavy or front heavy, right? And that's it. Now I'm gonna chop this up with more aeroid mix. Honestly, the, uh, the larger the pot, the more medium it's obviously gonna take and that is Another reason why I like to use smaller pots, I think I'm just saving a lot of medium. Like I just made this aeroid mix and almost the whole tub is gone just into this one plant. All right, All right so as you can see, I just planted the two poles next to each other and I just secured them with a cable tie. So I have obviously this growth point over here with the new growth coming. But this one over here is the last node on the old pole. So this is where I cut the pole. And this is gonna reshoot in at least one or two nodes at the top. So I have this new growth, as well as some future growth coming from here. And I want to 
redirect both of them to one moss pile that I'm gonna put in the middle so that they both then grow into the middle one. Let me just quickly cut these. So for this to work, I'm gonna top this up with moss first to make sure this is nice and full of moss. So I've got this moss pile. Actually, this was a moss pile, the one of the plants that was on here. Didn't survive winter, so I'm obviously recycling it, but that's why it's already a little uh, green from the algae buildup, but that's okay. Now, I'm just gonna put this right in the middle. I could also just extend one. Should I just extend one? All right, I'll just, yeah, I'll just extend one. So I'll just extend the one that has the existing growth on it. And then the other one, once it grows new shoots, I'll just start and directing them towards the same moss pile. That's exactly what I've done with the El Salvador and different to what I've done with my gigas, but I'll show you both of them in a sec. So now this is basically just my normal drop and extend process, just that we added an additional pole to the right of it. So first I use a garden stake. That garden stake is gonna give stability as well as connect the poles and I just connect the garden stake to the first pole using a couple of cable ties and then take the extension and I pop this on here and I also connect this using cable ties. Now just for additional support I like to connect the poles to each other so I'll do that. can be a little bit finicky but I just keeps it all together. This can be a bit challenging, but I kind of use like scissors or a chopstick or something like that to kind of guide the cable tie through the grid of the moss pole. Alrighty, and here we are. So let me just put this outside so I can give it water and I'll show you results of when I've done this process previously. All right, so a plant I've done this with before is my El Salvador. If I bring it a bit closer and it's obviously a mess and ignore all of this white bit that's just a bit of mineral buildup. I should really give this another good spray. Anyway, you can see this was the bottom pole. This was the top pole, potted them next to each other, just extended the top and these shoots over here then reshot and they found their way onto the new moss pole. It's very messy in there so I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me show you another example. This one is my philodendron gigas. Again, I've got two poles right next to each other. And then I extended them kind of in the middle. And then one shoot from the first pole went onto the extension. And another shoot from the other pole went onto the extension. So now I have two shoots on this pole, which essentially doubles the impact I've got. Look at these beautiful new leaves over here. So it's nice because I doubled the impact without having to go through any additional propagation step. I just used the inevitable, the chop and extend process because eventually it will reach the top. I used that to my advantage to just double the impact while also keeping the plant manageable. And I could do that again, right? Once this reaches the top, there'll be two shoots. I could cut that even put it next to this one and then and so on, right? Like it's kind of inde uh, indefinite options and so on. Like with my El Salvador, for example, by now there's like 10 plants or so on there. Anyway, alrighty. So just to recap, basically the chop and extend is a process that helps me keep my plants at a manageable height and I'm taking full advantage of the root system that the plant has grown within the moss pile. But you can also be strategic with your chop and extend and at the same time double your impact by just planting the top right next to the bottom pole. Of course, if it's a nice and desirable plant, maybe you wanna sell the bottom part to buy some other plants for your collection instead. But if your goal is to create nice lush moss poles, so that you can't even see the moss poles anymore, this is a really, really good tip to double your plant without really having to start from scratch or without losing too much progress of these nice large leaves. So these should technically continue as nothing ever happened, just purely based on the root system within the moss pile. If you want to learn any more about how I make my moss poles, how I water my moss poles, how I keep my moss poles stable and so on, I'll link the moss pole playlist at the end screen and there's plenty of tutorials in there for you to watch. Like, subscribe and leave a nice comment and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.